Hello everyone and welcome to the next update on the Tumble Rock Canyon Railroad. In this episode we'll be focusing on the first phase of construction on the mountain and tunnel. Now this tunnel is not like a normal tunnel, it's not going to be completely under the rock work. Actually the idea was to kind of create a snow shed. And so you can see here I drew out the floor plan of the snow shed. I also had a separate piece of paper for the design of the support bents and everything for it. And I started assembling it. And it really was a very odd shape because it's built on a curve and it had to kind of fit between the rock work. So yeah, as you can see, it is not exactly the same shape or the same width in any kind of way. And in this case, you can see how that affected the final construction. Here it is in its final place. It did not end up the width I expected it to, even though I measured and cut everything correctly. It did not become the width I expected. And as, a, as you look down on it, you can see how there's this kind of pinch point. And so the trains would actually get caught up on the woodwork of it. So it had to be completely scrapped. It was not useful. So I had to kind of think of a different design, some other way to do things. That's when my father and I went to the Columbia River Gorge Model Railway and I saw this snow shed slash rockfall shed on display there as part of the railroad. And so I replicated that for myself, drawing out all the plans and then cutting everything and then assembling it myself, you know, dyeing all the wood. The same kind of process I've been doing for everything else. And you can see how the trains will look in comparison to its size. So here's the passenger train going through the snow shed. Now the white part of the foam that sticks up about the same height as the passenger cars, that will be the part of the rock work where you go through a very short tunnel and then you come out into that snow shed slash rockfall shed. And the mountain will be just beyond it. So you can see the size difference between the snow shed and the train cars. It had to be extra tall to make sure that the tallest train car ever put through there can definitely fit through it. So you can see here in the daylight that the snow shed slash rock slide shed, what it looks like, the roof has not yet been painted. It'll look more rusted and uh, dilapidated just ever so slightly. And then of course, there'll be a rock arch that goes along the backside of it and all the way up to the mountain where I've temporarily just set some supplies and locomotives. But that little mountain range will be about twice the height when completed. Um, so, of course, obviously, it's not going to be white either. You can also see some of the props that I purchased in better light. And, of course, the little horse that's sitting there in the cattle car. I've begun forming the shape of the tunnel by using just a little bit of paper and sticking that down and then cutting the edge of the paper to the shape of the tunnel that I want. The rest will be the, the snow shed. And behind it, I'll start building up the mountain range with, with these uh, newspapers until it builds up the mountain range to the size and shape that I want it to be. Now here you can see I am using this technique that model railroaders often use. It's where you kind of bundle up a bunch of pieces of newspaper to create the rough shape of the mountain that you want. This will not be the finalized shape, of course. There has to be other layers of things applied to it. But you can kind of see how it works. You just bundle up the newspaper and start building it up and building it up. Now, there's different ways you can do it. You can wrap the newspaper individually with tape and then tape that bundle down or just scrunch up a bundle and put tape on it and kind of strap it down that way. So I'm using both techniques, you know, just building everything up. And in my head, I have an idea of what I want the mountain to look like. I can picture the mountain three dimensionally in my head. And so I'm just going and I'm making that basic shape. And then later on, what will happen 
is the plaster cloth layer will go on top of it. There'll be two layers of plaster cloth and then a layer of plaster spread over that to kind of smooth it out. And then from there, more plaster will go on it in order for me to carve out the rock work. So there's kind of a, a method to the madness here. Now in that tunnel, you can see uh, the paper alone was not enough to support the shape of the tunnel. So I actually stuck a piece of wire in there to form the shape of the rounded top of the tunnel. And then over that wire is where I put the newspaper bundle. Because ob obviously having just a, a ring of newspaper on top was not going to hold the shape of the tunnel. Now I'm making sure that the cars, which the largest cars are the passenger cars. I'm making sure that they can fit through the final shape of the tunnel. Now here you can see that I used my wire foam cutter to cut the shape of the ground foam for the bottom of Tumble Rock Canyon, fitting all the pieces between the bridge bents. This allows it so I can actually create two rivers that run in opposite directions away from the base of the two waterfalls coming off of the mountain. And then over this I will spread the plaster cloth. Now here you can see I added the first layer of plaster cloth. I didn't show myself doing it because it would have been basically just a view of my backside the whole time. So, but you, you get the idea. You wet the plaster cloth, you cut it into sheets, wet it, and then you lay it down and you just kind of do that methodically from top to bottom until you have your first layer built up. Then after this will go the second layer, or you can spread some uh, plaster over this and then put the second layer and then plaster over that. So I might do it that way because that kind of makes it more rigid, more tough. So we'll see how it goes. But I'm ultimately very happy, very pleased with the first layer of the plaster cloth. Again, it's not going to be perfect because this is just the first layer. This isn't where we sculpt the rock yet. This is just where we form the basic shape of it. So the largest river is there on the left. Don't mind the thing in the center, but on the far right is the smaller river, which goes through. Now here is the smaller hill that I've built next to the farmhouse, or I should say across the tracks from the farmhouse. Again, you've got to vary the terrain and there'll be more terrain work in the future, but this is what I've got so far. So anyway, now you can see the train running through the whole setup. The snow shed is not yet glued down, but eventually it will be. And uh, you can see everything works just fine. There's plenty of clearance. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me on this first phase of construction on the mountain. There will be other updates to show the construction of the mountain as well as other aspects of the model railroad. So thank you so much. Subscribe for more content and hit the like button. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you for watching everyone. For more stories on the architecture, engineering, and history of the Steam Age, make sure to subscribe. You can support me by either becoming a Patreon member or channel member, or you can help donate to my transatlantic voyage to the UK. Links and information are in the description below. Thanks again!